I remember starting out cooking. And I went down every YouTube rabbit hole you could find. I started with an Oklahoma Joe Highland. So my favorite channels were Cooking with Rye, um, Meat Cranium, because they had Oklahoma Joe Highlands. Now, it wasn't long before I discovered some of the heavy hitters like Baby Back Maniac, T. Roy Cooks, um, Mad Scientist Barbecue before he blew up. The interesting fact is, when I discovered them, none of them were large or big channels. Which brings me to my first point or myth, that only the large channels know barbecue. They get the views and they get the followers. Yeah, before they were famous, they were filming on iPhones and asking for subscribers. So give some smaller barbecue channels a chance. The odds of their backyard looking like your backyard are so much higher. The challenges they're facing are going to be so much more like the challenges you're facing. Well, if you're learning barbecue and you're learning to cut your teeth, it's so much better to see videos that show you how to do it versus perfectly edited videos on expensive equipment that really just pay for sponsorships. I don't know why I'm watching barbecue videos and suddenly I've got everybody breaking into cereal commercials and pitching me cereal. But, um... That's a benefit of the small channels. <laughs> there are no corporate sponsors. They're too small. And so, myth number one, only the large channels know what's going on. I would say that's a falsehood. Myth number two, people on YouTube are objective. It's been my experience that people love to pick sides left or right, rap or no rap, traditional flow versus my reverse flow, fat cap up or fat cap down. Let's take for example the rap. Let's talk about the rap. Texas crutch with foil or the Franklin butcher paper. And let's not forget the chud foil boat. It all comes down to what you're going for. The Texas Crutch is great when you're in a bind and you need speed to things up. You got people coming at five and you need to hurry it up. Butcher paper allows the bark to stay intact while you're still rendering the bottom. Now the foil boat that's so popular now is really a takeoff from Big Mo Cason and his hybrid of a foil boat of foil on the bottom and butcher paper on the top. It's going to give the most crunchy bark and the rendered bottom. So really, if you think about it, the right method is really based on what you need. You know, one of the biggest comments that I got, and I didn't post it, was, um, what did I think about the Lang compared to the Shirley? And I really didn't want to go into that. So I, th I talked a little bit about smokers in the video, um, what features to get in a premium smoker. And that's just because I thought people needed to be thinking a little bit outside the box. Look, you start spending two, three thousand dollars, you're gonna get a good smoker. It's the other stuff that matters. But that brings me back to my point. Lang versus Shirley. All right, if you talk to the Shirley group, Shirley Nation, they're gonna talk about Shirley's all day long. If you talk to Langs, they're gonna talk about Langs all day long. How about traditional flow versus reverse flow? You got traditional flow manufacturers, pit builders that have written white papers on how bad reverse flow is and do videos on it. Well, I've cooked on both. There really ain't that much difference. They're just different cookers. So my point about all this is, is you're pretty much gonna find on YouTube whatever it is you're looking for. So if you're looking for a reason to buy a reverse flow, you'll find videos telling you to buy a reverse flow. If you're looking to buy or want to have a Texas style traditional pit, there's videos out there that'll tell you that. The thing about YouTube is it just reinforces what we're already hoping. So that's myth number two. People are not objective on YouTube. Somebody's getting paid. Somebody's 
got a reason and somebody's trying to justify what they've already purchased more often than not people that have a certain smoker are going to produce content that appeals to the people that like that smoker I can cook same brisket I can do one on the Texas original pit it'll get hardly any views I cook the same brisket on a Shirley my views will blow up so naturally if I'm into YouTube for YouTube's sake I'm gonna cook everything on the Shirley I'm gonna get more views more subscribers more everything but that doesn't mean that the Texas original pit doesn't cook fantastic brisket it just means that I was chasing YouTube so I'd love to know your thoughts on all this um, I'm by no means an expert I'm just somebody in his backyard that set his iPhone up and expressed his opinion but what do you think what's what's some of the myths that you think are really important are some of the rules that you think are just ridiculous and I'm also interested in what's your favorite pit so are you one of those people that man you just love your fill in the blank your Franklin your workhorse your Lang your Shirley I'd love to know or maybe you're somebody that's got a smoker that most people don't know about you own a new boathouse smoker man I love those things I think they're fantastic same thing with your favorite barbecue channels does everybody just tune into baby back maniac T Roy cooks same thing for small channels what are some of the small channels you like like my porch barbecue smoke master D 805 barbecue junkie sleeper barbecue killer Miller barbecue man there's some good stuff out there so I'd love to know who some of your favorite small channels are thank y'all for watching um, if you want to subscribe to get more content like this please do um, I'm always amazed when people subscribe I appreciate it it's it's quite humbling actually